Hi everyone, so in today's quick tip I wanted to um, share with you guys an uh, interesting thing that I uh, was having a problem uh, with here in Grasshopper. What it was is I was trying to basically create a grid. So if we bring in a grid here, you see that we have, um, you know, the defaults, we can make it bigger. So let's go to 10. So I'm going to increase the size here so we can see it a little bit clearer. And what it was is we have the points which are basically at the intersections and I wanted to create a rectangle. So if we go here to parameter um, or double click here, we go to rectangle. We'll see that if we actually put the, rect the rectangle exactly at those points, we do get we do get it centered. But as soon as I plug in a value, let's say uh, a five. So if I plug in a five on the X and a five on the Y, we see that it doesn't center them. It, the, it, that's the spring point, but it creates it going out. So I wanted to be able to uh, create a grid, but having these points be centered. And also because I wanted to create some columns that are not perfectly uh, square, but I wanted to be, let's say, uh, a six by eight uh, rectangle, but I want it to be centered. So what I <clears throat> what I figured out that we need to do is basically take this rectangle and move it in the opposite direction, uh, both in the X and in the Y. So let me show you. I'm going to move, double click, and I'm going to move this rectangle. In which direction? Well, we know we want to go in the X and in the Y. So let's go X, Y, Z vector. So this is going to give us the ability to move in the X, Y, and Z with us uh, plugging in a specific value. So we see that for the X value, we have a six. For the Y value, we have an eight. So we'll plug in the Y and the X there. And then in the vector, we'll plug in the motion. But we see that we actually moved it from this corner to that corner. We actually want to go in the opposite direction. So we'll double click here and we'll go to negative and we'll plug in the vector into the negative and then the negative into here. And not because now we what we did actually was take it from that corner and move it to the opposite one. And we actually need to do half. So we double click here, go to divide by two. And so we're going to all of these movements, we're going to divide by two. And then we're going to plug that into the negative. And there, now we've successfully placed those rectangles exactly in the center of that grid. And now we can make a bigger slider here. And we can see that, yes, it does work. We can center those and have them there. But it does take us a few steps and we do have to move it in the opposite direction, divide the vectors in half, then make a move in the opposite direction, like I said, with this value. And so uh, that was just something that I came across here in Grasshopper, because when you look here under vector, grid, uh, we have these grids, which is fine, but what we don't have is under rectangle. So if we go to curve and we go to primitive, I think here's a rectangle. So we have rectangle uh, on a plane. We have rectangle three points, which is, yeah, basically creating a, using three points, two points, and then we have polygon. Um, technically, we could create circles here. So at the points, create a circle. Give it a radius of 12. We have those centered but we don't have the ability to make one bigger or smaller because I can always take this and go to a uh, rectangle. I think we can create a, no, uh, create a box right here. And we'll see that, yeah, we can create a, uh, you know, square ones, but that's not the point of this, this uh, quick tip. The point was to show you that uh, on a grid, you could uh, move things around parametrically to have things aligned centered and uh, obviously we can 
increase or decrease the number of segments that we have here. And so this is basically what I use for a jumping off point for creating, let's say, a grid uh, for a structure for a building or something like that, where you want them to be exactly centered on the center line for the for the grid. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, learned something new. And if you enjoy this content and you want to learn a little bit more about Grasshopper and, and how it works, make sure you uh, like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments what you think about uh, these tutorials and if you want to, if you have ideas for other ones or if you want to see more. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.